the 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 age of sisterhood is upon us. Right. Like yeah, there's no I more. I believe in that. There's no more True. of that. Like they want to pretend that it, we're bashing each other, but we're really not. And everybody's right. in competition. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. They're always in competition. When which yeah. I love about our friendship is that even when I wasn't selling or vice versa, we always were there with each other just Supporting. to help to support. Absolutely. Because it's like it's not really you know about competition at the end of the right. day. So that's what kind of helped us be like, hey. We need to do our own thing. <laughs> like, because it's, it's co elevating. You know? Right? Right. Yeah. What up? Welcome to That's It, That's All. I'm your host, Casey Carnage. But y'all know me. Today we have some lovely, lovely ladies on the couch. We got my girl, Shakura. Hey. And Javier. Hey. And they're going to talk about what they got going on. And as you know, um, this podcast is about highlighting black women through our voices, through our lens, through the things that we're doing, how we're how we're showing up in the world and how we're helping the world. And they have some amazing things going on. We're going to talk about their individual businesses, but we're also going to talk about the Harmony Utopia Fest, which I think is going to be amazing. Yes. And I'm excited. And we ready. Yes. So, what's up, girls? So, first off, my name is Shakora, as you guys just heard her say. And I do have a clothing brand, Royal Habits Clothing. I do a lot of customs, you know. I'm from the East Coast originally. I moved to L.A. about... East Coast girl. I know. I moved to L.A. about five years ago, like, basically just to trace my dream. Like, everybody else, I was doing music, acting, the whole nine yards. But then once the pandemic hit, I kind of did a reset and I'm like let me focus on my rebranding with my clothing brand because when you're creative like it, it just comes from everywhere whether it's music clothes whatever the case may be like I was just like I need to get in tune with creating so I got back on my clothing brand and I started doing pop-ups and, and what yeah. would you um describe your clothes your clothing I would say it's like a luxury urban brand you know urban what I mean chic <sighs> not so yeah yeah you can say urban I, chic. I like I mean it's, I the reason why I'm calling it chic because I have seen it and I have seen your models that you have it and it's definitely giving like it's giving runway it's giving Ow. that Thank urban you vibe so, so we put in yeah. that in the the universe yes, as well I receive that so okay for sure so I'm I'm big on quality like I would not sell something that I wouldn't wear myself and I love doing customs but it's just harder to do customs because it's like di you're dealing with different sizes different people and now that I'm doing other things it's just it's just a little bit more difficult to own in on like just doing one of one pieces for everyone so a lot of people like the one of one pieces but I have to make things for the masses right now because I have so many different things going on but DM us we can still do a custom two weeks ahead of time you know what I mean <laughs> like I'm not gonna turn down any you know how about you Jack? okay so hey guys Javier um I'm actually first a recording artist I've been doing music since 2011 so a little bit about me. I uh, was doing a lot of touring overseas in Jamaica, Grenada, where my family's from, Trinidad, different places like that. Um, and I was doing a music video called Give Me That Love featuring Beanie Man. That's one of my biggest hits. And it's a really funny story. So basically, they were supposed to wet my hair. I have curl naturally curly hair. And I have the braids in today, but naturally curly hair. And I have bleach in my hair. Um, they were supposed to wet my hair with water. And they wet it with alcohol. And my hair just started coming out for, for weeks and things like that because of humidity and things mm -hmm. like that. So I was devastated, and I think they did it on purpose. So that's number one. Oh, <laughs> girl, that's another story for another, another, time, another day. <laughs> but that's a short version. Mm -hmm. So I was very devastated. I was trying different things. And my family, they told me about this secret ingredient that they would use to help your hair grow. So... I used that, plus put other things in it, and my hair started to grow back. So that created Javier Collection. I actually have one of my bottles with me right now. I yes. Show you guys. Oh, show me the bottle. I love when people bring things. Yes, girl. Bring all the things. <laughs> so, so like, fortunately, your business came out of it. But unfortunately, yes. people need to stop hating. Yeah, so <laughs> this is the first thing I made. So you can smell it. It smells pretty Ooh, good. It has all natural is this ingredients. A gift for me? 
You can have it. Ooh. Period. <laughs> Make Just your hair. Asking you shall set, uh, asking you <laughs> shall receive. receive. Y'all, it smells mad mm-hmm. good. It smells so good. So, like, this is for, like, scalp? Yeah, so it helps your hair grow really, really quickly. Like, pre-poo sitch or it's, like, so every day? So, usually I do it every other day. She's going to zoom in, y'all. There she goes. Oh, it smells so good. Thank <laughs> you. Usually I do it every other day. Um, you just put it on your scalp, massage it. You don't have to put that much, and you'll start seeing results. People, I, uh, some of my customers, alopecia and things like that, and their hair has been growing. So I'm going to try yeah. it. I got these braids in there. I can put my jewels. Yeah, put on your braids, in girl. We I all have, have the braids. I love it. <laughs> yes. I know so we're like, all matching. Okay, so as black women in your industries, right, you know, there's a lot of things that we go through. There's a lot of things that challenge, especially as a business owner, as somebody who is running their own business or somebody that is running their own career, right? Because mm-hmm. what, are some, what are some of the challenges that you guys have faced and how have you overcome them? Well, for starters, when I get emails, it's always dear sir. For some reason, like dear yeah, sir. always like that's crazy. I don't know why because like my um brand is actually like unisex, so I don't know if that's why they're under the impression that it's a male running it or whatnot. So I just feel like as being a female, period, it's hard for us, you know. Um, so for starters, when I f- started my first collection out in LA, I got a new manufacturer. Girl, it took me like almost two years to get my uh, merchandise from him. Like, after, you know, I've paid everything, I have to pretty much harass him. I had to pretty much get a friend go up there with me, like, who was a male, and I had my stuff the next day. So I was just like, it's difficult being a woman, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they'll they'll try you, opposed to, like, if you were a man, it's like, no tolerance, like, I'm not going to try you, business is business. But, you know, when you're a female, it's like, oh, here, heart, oh, next week, come by next week, you know what I mean? Like, so, like, I feel like uh, just being a female in the business world, is it could be tough, you know? It's not always easy. How about you? I definitely agree with that because even just like us looking, for example, like a marketing agent, you already know what happened. Yeah. This guy, he came up to me. He's like, oh, I'm going to help market your stuff. And next thing I know, he's in my text saying d- dirty stuff to me. And I'm just like, yeah. huh? Am I trying to get with you? Oh, you the dirty stuff. What he said, girl. It was just so <laughs> random. Like, oh. He basically was like, what did he say again? He said something along the lines like, oh, um, I have something to tell you. And I was like, what? And he was like, oh, uh, I want to see how you taste or some shit like that. I can't even remember. <laughs> but we, it was like, along the lines of that. And I was yeah, like, crazy. like I, we were supposed to have a meeting like about marketing my stuff. So that's one thing. You know, we also have done a lot of like pop-ups and st- stuff like that. It's always some creep. And it, it's just yeah. a lot. You know, it's you crazy. Know? I had a friend. I actually had a lawyer friend tell me that. As a woman, even though we shouldn't have to do this, when mm-hmm. we go to these meetings or we set up these meetings, we should always have a male with us. Not to speak for us, but the fact that it's a protection thing. Yeah, yeah for sure. Because a lot of times you think, like, especially, like, you know, you know, we carry ourselves the way we carry us. Nobody should have to, like... Uh, move differently than what they're already moving right Right. and sometimes it's very disheartening when you feel like somebody is like seeing you and like really out here to cheer you and you support you and then you get there and they got ulterior motives you know it's it's sad which happens all the time all the time yeah all the time it's sick (laughs) i call it pretty girl syndrome i'm telling you it's pretty girl syndrome we can't we can't win so so we out here winning i'm just okay so you guys do a lot of pop-up events, right? Yeah. You guys are vendors. I've been to one of your shows mm-hmm. that you're vending. Um, how, how, do, how do you guys start doing that? Like, you just decided, I want to be in a So, I originally, when I started rebranding, like I said, I was an artist as well um, before I started with my brand. But I've also, you know, when you're an artist, you are your brand. So, it kind of went hand in hand. But when the pandemic came, I stopped doing music and I just focused on the brand. So, what I did was I decided to rebrand. Because I've been out for a while, but I wanted to make sure that everybody knew who RHC was. So I did pop-ups in New York, Rhode Island, uh, Atlanta, Arizona, like you name it. I, I decided to do like, I think it was like an eight-city tour mm-hmm. where I did pop-up shops in every city. So after I finished that, I decided to just focus on L.A. because I hadn't did any in L.A. yet. Mm-hmm. So then I started doing like a lot of like um, something dope to do for the women, you know, up-and-coming small vending events and stuff like that and when I basically what I started realizing as I started trying to do like the bigger venues black on the block uh, hot water cornbread some of the you know biggest bigger establishments is like as a small business you're spending a lot of money so like you kind of 
expect to like you know make something you know mm-hmm. one or two sales something and mm-hmm. i feel like as much money as you spend as a vendor you know what i mean like it wasn't market it wasn't really catered to the vendors so much like it was what do you mean by that what do you think it was catered to so i just think like i don't like i don't want to put something no, no, to, no, no, the, no. to the universe but um yeah. um i just feel like for example, we do it like I do events now because I was a vendor before and I felt like, okay, I'm paying so much money to be a vendor and I'm not making any money. So now what what I do with my events is that I charge the vendors basically barely anything, you know what I mean? So basically I'm like, okay, even if you come and you don't make a lot of money, you didn't really lose anything and you got your brand out there, you got your name out there. We also market the vendors on every single thing we do. Mm -hmm. Like they have a placement on our page. Like you can go and follow them even if it's weeks and months after the event that they did. If you're looking for them, you'll still be able to find Mm -hmm. them. So they'll always be listed on our page opposed to like sometimes I pay like $400 to be a vendor and I wasn't even listed on the page. And then when I got there, I had to set up all the way in the back. People don't even know I'm back there. So it was Mm. just like... You know, like, I'm not, we're, like, me personally with with the events we throw now, we're not in it for the money. We're in it to bring the creatives together. So, like, even as an artist, I've paid to perform sometimes, and I get there, there's no producers that I can work with. There's no one looking for the vision, looking for fresh artists. You know, there's no one giving positive advice and feedback on my performance, the X, Y, and Z. So we're basically trying to bring the whole community together where everybody is getting help. Like, it's benefiting mm. everybody, not just, like, the people throwing it together or just, John, have you had you the know. same kind of experiences? Yeah, so I she actually inspired me to start the pop-ups because mm. before I was just selling online, like, again, like I said, with the hair growth serum, I have a whole line now. I have mm. different shampoos, conditioners, and also it's 100% vegan. So I s- actually started selling my stuff in 2020 because, again, pandemic, nothing to do, kind of stopped the music also as well, like her. So with that being said, she was going to different places. And what was that, last year or year before? Um, I don't remember. Yeah, it was, it was last like last year. year, the last mm-hmm. couple years. And it was actually like, yeah. It was last year, right? Yeah, we went just, to Atlanta, right? We, we're, we're forgetting it's 2024. Now, I know. So I'm just like, wait a minute. Yeah, it was yeah. just 2023. Yesterday, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she went to Atlanta. I came with her, you know, to support. She had her art seat there. And yeah. um, we went now, to... Also, just to chime in, like, even the ones that I was doing out of state, I always usually get, like, two local artists to come out, perform for free. I usually get free food, drinks, because it's about the community. Mm-hmm. So I want you guys to come in, learn about the brand, vibe with us, enjoy us. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, right. So it was basically like a marketing strategy. And we ended up doing one together in, in Arizona, Arizona, which did really well. Which did really well. So then I was like, hmm, you know... I started applying to like things like Black Flea and things like that. So I was I did a couple of the bigger events, but then we found out the malls had opportunities to do pop ups also. So we were always together doing this. Yeah, like mm-hmm. we will set up together, you know, help right. each other out because we only had each other because we didn't have nobody else. So yeah. thank God, I'm mm. I'm thankful for you because I, likewise, though, at that point we were just well, in see, grind. Was about, though. Gambling is part of the culture of America since even before we were America. I'm Norman Chad. I know gambling. I've played blackjack and poker. I've bet sports and horse races. I've even hit the slot machines at a Pahrump, Nevada 7-Eleven. You say gambling, I say gambling mad. So join me on Gambling Mad with Norman Chad wherever you find your podcasts. Follow us on socials at Gambling Mad Show or at Gambling Mad Norman Chad at YouTube. Is that really it though? The, here's the thing. We can't do it by ourselves, right? No. We, we want to believe we can do it by right, ourselves. Absolutely. We want to act yeah. like everything is on our shoulders and we can create everything. But when you find really true, genuine people that really believe in your vision and right. see your vision, it really means more than anything. Right. So it's Definitely. good that you guys have, you know, a partner and you guys can do that because, and also too, I think that it's important that younger girls can see that. Like, of you know course. what I mean? Like, the, the, the age of sisterhood is upon us. Right. Like, yeah, there's no I more. I believe in that. There's no more sure. of that. Like, they want to pretend that it, we're bashing each other, but we're really not. And everybody's right. in competition. <laughs> not at all. Each other. Not at all. They're always in competition. When which yeah. I love about our friendship is that even when I wasn't selling or vice versa, we always were there with each other just Supporting. to help, to support. Absolutely. Because it's like, it's not really, you know, about competition at the end of the day. Right. So that's what kind of helped us be like, hey, we need to do our own thing. <laughs> like, Because it's, it's co-elevating, you know? right? right. Yeah. It's co-elevating. So let's talk about um, Harmony Utopia Fest. Yes. Um, how did you guys come up with that idea? I want to know how you guys came up with the name. Because I was just like, Harmony <laughs> Utopia. Because it's kind of like, kind of the same, but not. 
okay, so first, <laughs> like, where do we start? All right. So first of all, we came up with the whole idea because, like she said, we actually started doing mall, the mall events or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, the mall events were very stressful. So, like, <laughs> let me tell you, our backs were It was hurting. so crazy. I'm like, there's so many Sleep stories. Like, where days. do I start? First, crazy let's just people. Start, oh, let, let, we can both give you guys, like, um, a quick stalker story. Okay. Because it's just like, so you're in the mall for hours at a time, right, doing these events. You're basically in there for damn near, like, 12 hours at a time. You're vending. You're selling stuff. Now, in the midst of it, you're getting... All type of strange people walking around you. You know, a man that would just walk past you and just directly follow mm. you. Like, and it would still walk and follow you. Men with their girls just staring and following Crazy. you, whatever. So, um, as a business owner, it's like, okay, hi, like, yeah, I want you to buy this shirt. Hey, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so it's just like when they come over, oh, what's this? You know, you're going to entertain it because mm-hmm. you're trying to sell something. But after a while, it's just like, so me, okay, I'm from New York. So the thing about being from New York is that <laughs> you learn at a very young age. If a guy asks you for your for their number, like if they ask you for your number, you just give it to them. Right. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, just give it to them. I even like don't even give them a fake number. Give them the real number because they'll call you right then and there and be like, "Oh, you'll get cursed out." Get and be like, "You could have just told me mm-hmm. no." Like it would it'd be a whole thing. So, you know, as I'm doing these events, like she always tells me, like, "Why do you give out your real number?" I'm like, "Because I don't want anybody calling me on the spot." And then like I gotta be like, "Oh, I gave you the fake number." <laughs> it, it's just a whole big thing. Mm-hmm. So this one time, oh all right, God. I do give out my number or whatever. Like I said. But this Crazy. one time marketing tactic. <laughs> she, she knows she doing. That was, you know what? That was the last time I gave him my number though. Like because I'm just like, okay, whatever. So I give my number out. This guy's calling. He sends me a text message, but I'm busy. Like I got a lot, a lot of things going on. You know what I'm saying? I don't have time to answer. Like on your terms. So right. long story short, I got a little free time, and she just so happened to be with me because like I'm planning <laughs> other stuff. So I'm like, oh, I met this guy at the mall. I think we can use him for this. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, let me plug in with him. So I give him a call or whatever, throw the phone to the speaker because I'm just like doing other stuff. So I'm like, oh, hey, how are you? Oh, like it was just so crazy. It was like a demon on the other side of the phone. Like, <laughs> girl, it was, it was so, so weird. crazy. Like, it was so weird. honestly, like I'm very outspoken and stuff. So if it scared me, like, <laughs> like we know that's a problem. So I thought the phone was speaking now. Like he's just getting crazy on the phone. He's like, oh. I can't even really remember, but he was just, like, so rude and nasty on the phone. Oh, people make time for the things that they want. She just met him three days ago. Talking three about, I'm a kid, you miss out. So it was just <laughs> so crazy because he was just like, oh, people make time for the things that they want. You can't be that busy. I got three jobs, so, and I know you don't mm-hmm. have as many as me. Like, all of these things, this man doesn't even know aggressive. me. He doesn't Very even aggressive. know me. So I'm like... So now I put on my, you know, professional voice. I'm like, you know what? I'm so sorry. I was like, I'm really not. I was like, I'm really not a confrontational person. Oh, you're going to be alone for the rest of your life if you're not confrontational, baby girl. I'm a grown man and this, that, and the third. I was just like. He hit you with a baby girl. Yes. Oh, he was it, it mad. It was so real. He was so mad. Um, I was like, okay, you have a blessed day. God bless you, right? Girl, he started sending me selfies of himself. Mm-hmm. Selfies. Now, Psychopath. I know this is this is like really out of like the norm, but like I said, you know, I don't really date that much in L.A., like, you know what I'm saying? So a while back when I was talking to a guy in L.A., like, all day he would send me selfies. So I was like, is that an L.A. thing? Like, I know that's uh, off off topic, but... I don't know. I'm to be like, honest either. with you, the, the L.A. dating, that's another topic. Y'all can go yeah. check it out on YouTube. Yeah. But we definitely talk about it. Tell us what episode, girl, because yeah, I need to look that it. one up. No, it's literally the only episode that does not have video, but it's literally the funniest episode. I'm I got it. Like, I got to listen to that one. the funniest episode Because it's crazy. It. But yeah, girl, like... LA dating has been it's been a strange place. Like well, men are strange. strange place. It was and I, was I give up. I'm not like, <laughs> strange place. It's like you know well, what? Okay, I, so I you guys, were, so you guys, okay. Before we get too off topic, I, I know, right? Going. So you guys were doing these mall events, and you mm-hmm. guys were talking about creating this event. The, okay, so Utopia. So, right. so what happened was one day at the mall or whatever. It was actually the day when I was like, "This is my last time doing the mall event. I'm not, I can't like it's just too much like the hassle." The stalkers, everything. So long story short, this I ended up losing like a piece to one of my racks that I needed, and I went around to different vendors asking like, "Oh, do you have like an Allen key or whatever?" And it just so happened like this white, this white man um, who was coming to help um, help his daughter set up had one in his truck or something like that. So he ended up bringing it back, and then he, you know, he just basically asked me like, "Did I know um, anyone who would be interested in vending and also like planning an event that they had a, a state like somewhere in a 
Some was it um, Bo- Box Canyon? Um, yeah, Box, Box Canyon. Canyon. So it was like um, basically, I want to say it was like a estate, but it was a, it was like a, I don't know, it gave like Coachella vibes. You mm, know what I mean? Right. So, you know. Um, I agreed to do it, you know what I'm saying? Like, me and her legit followed up with him the next day, you know, linked up with him and his business partner. So mm-hmm. that's basically how the Harmony Utopia Fest came about because we got presented with an opportunity to throw events for another establishment, uh, um, some investors, a different group of people, and it didn't work out. So mm-hmm. when that yeah. didn't work out, I was just basically like, you know what? We both was like, we can do this ourselves. Like, yeah. if we did all of this for these people in a short amount of time, imagine what we can do for ourselves. So the thing that was the red flag for us, the reason why it didn't work out is because he basically wanted to, I, I want to kind of say monitor the group of people we yeah. brought in there. And we felt it was like... very strange. Yeah, we put so much work and energy into this event that I want my people to be able to come so out and enjoy it. it. He was a white man. Pretty and much. wanted to monitor how many black people exactly. were Exactly. Yeah. Pretty and much. the area it was, like, you're going to call us crazy, but when we went up there, it looked like hills have eyes. Like, right. it was, looking well, like we went at, Okay, that's just too many. It's, <laughs> it's just a it's lot. It's just so crazy. Because shout out to Polo G. We ended up at his <laughs> Oh, my God. We ended up, we ended up house. Po- at Polo G's house. Yeah. Okay, Polo it, was G. Just, it was just so many crazy things that yeah, happened. The man, so. the man, basically, he worked on Polo G's house, I guess, like sold mm-hmm. it to him. And he's like, oh, Polo G's going to be... This is like the when we didn't know anything. It's crazy to He me. basically <laughs> said that... Um, Polo G is going to come sing or whatever at the event. We're like, okay. He's like, okay, I'm going to introduce you to him. So we think Polo G knows we're coming. Like, right. oh, these are going to be the coordinators for the event. Right. So Polo G rolls up. He's on crutches, and he's yelling at this man like, <laughs> you got people here. What is going so on? I don't know you like that. And I was crazy. like, it was so crazy. let's get out of here. Because, because like, I don't know what's happening. The thing about it is like... <sighs> I don't want to make any comments so people think I'm racist. Like, my stepmother's white. You know, my I got so many. All my siblings and I'm half are half white. white. So it's my like, best friend's half white. So yeah. it's really not that. But some people are just like. Girl. It, some people it was are just like clueless. Like, it's just crazy. Like, I, f- I really feel like he felt entitled mm-hmm. like like it was just crazy like it was just it was i was upset because i'm like you uh-huh. put us in a situation to where something could have happened to us you brought right, us up here right. you know to this man well, private property this event. Right. you know what i'm saying and my whole thing is like i had told her like okay they're bringing us in because they need a black crowd they need a black audience but at the same time i'm not going to bring my people out here to get assaulted or right. you know targeted for any strange reason because yeah. now we're, we're discussing with these guys like security and certain things that they're going to need for the venue and they're like oh we have a sheriff and I'm we're like, like oh hell no no we mm-hmm. need you gotta sh- I don't mutual want like soon as he yeah, said I that i got really scared i was like <laughs> we were done we had a meeting after that we was like yeah no i'm not yeah sensitive. i'm like okay so you vibe. guys curved him we yeah. curved and him. then where did you guys go to next uh we went to the valley closer to where we live. north hills yeah so, so we were just like hey let's do our own stuff yeah. and um we actually ca- had called them because we needed something from them and they thought we were trying to throw an event at their spot. We're like, no, we got our own stuff going yeah, on. We like, had, by that point in time, excuse we... Excuse me. <laughs> so we do have a, res- a residency location in North Hills, which is like a resort mansion style mm-hmm. venue. That's where we have the fest with all the vendors, food, mm-hmm. activities, games, marijuana meditations, uh, massages. It's ex- it's basically like a, it's a whole experience. Mm-hmm. Like you come there, you do different things. Have a good time, drink, eat. But then we also have another location in Englewood where we hold the showcases. Okay. So yeah. it's two different little We kind of just get. want to be, basically our vision is to be the next Black Coachella. So that's yeah. where we're at let's right now. Let's talk about that. Let's talk yes. about Let's manifest sure. that. Oh, so yeah. in this in this music showcase, how does that, what does that look like for somebody who's thinking about going to the event, who is like, I'm not sure. I see these things, but you know, I don't know. What would mm-hmm. you say, tell them? Like, why should they be, at, why should they be at this event? if they're interested in coming or curious. Well, since both of us were in the industry prior, we have connections, so producers, different people that do videos, different things like that. So I believe it's a really good opportunity just to get them out there. Plus, we're all about the people, you know. Like, again, like we said earlier, it's not about the money. We just, like, we know, like, how hard it is to be in the industry. Yeah, because FYI, people, we are not making any coins right now, okay? No. <laughs> Check us back in a few months or something, right. but as of now, it's like, and we give back to charity. Every single time we throw an event, whether we make money or not, 
Mind you, we have not been making any money at all. Right. But like I said, we'll take money out of our own, our own pockets to give back to charity, charity. For, from every single event that we do. So and that's something like, that people don't understand, which goes on the topic about, you know, friends that don't support you. You know, oh, like a, a $10 ticket. I got people harassing me like, oh, can you get me in for free? And I'm just like, hey, like, it's the tickets are done, you know. Right. So at the end of the day, it's like, if you're my friend, it's only ten dollars. You should support. You know, this is not mm-hmm. just some random party down but the street. Still, but I mean, I, I know you guys saw that um, post. You know, it always floats around every mm-hmm. so often. Is to say your biggest supporters are the people on the internet. They are. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's sad. Like people that don't even know you. Know you? Yeah, I They're agree with that. People that don't even know you for and sure. It's, and it's crazy. And I always wonder why. I always want to dissect that. I don't know if it's like, well, it's a homeboy, a homegirl thing. We should right. like, like. I think the concept. I think more so like in our community, the mm-hmm. concept of feeling like you don't have to pay your friends. Like, why is that even a thing? I don't understand because I just feel like if you want to support your friend, you shouldn't be going, oh, I need to get it for free or can I get a discount? Because they don't see the work that we're doing, yeah. like with your clothes, with my hair stuff, how much it costs just to make your clothes, make my stuff, get it yeah. f- made and things so, like, like that. They don't get it. They'll see money coming in. They'll see like the bar. And it's like that didn't even put a dent in what we spent no, at to all. pull this whole thing together. Mm-hmm. Like. People don't understand, like, cameramen, you have to pay for those. You know what I'm saying? Security. Like, photographer, we have to pay for that. Security, we have to pay for that. Like, the venue, you have to pay for that. Like, yeah. nobody gives you anything for free. But, like, honestly, like, yo, I, I love my friends, like, family. So, like, like I wanted this to be a thing where we basically we both talked about it, like, how mm-hmm. we bring all of our friends in together and we come up together because we can't do it on our own. Mm-mm. We're very much well, aware of that. I was like, that's why I was like, I think the event that we met, um, one of our good friends, shout out to Nadia, Chatworthy Magazine. Yes. Um, she created like this. Um, what was it? An influencer create. Uh, yeah, that was dope for sure. Day, mm-hmm. And she rented a thing, and I got to meet a lot of beautiful people. I right. met there. I met um, Jacob there. I met a lot of yeah. good people that are artists, and I felt mm-hmm. like it was such an inspiring event. And then right. I had went to. Um, her next event, which was like the Barbie Day. Yeah, event. I wasn't able to make and that one, but it looked one. really dope. It was a big one. Yeah. And she had like this female empowerment uh, dinner. We all sat and it was like the most beautiful women, yeah. just women doing what we are supposed to do, loving on each other, supporting each right. other, buying I love that. from each other. Right. It was an amazing, and I can't wait. I think it's like a yearly annual thing. Okay, I, was like, I don't care where I'm at, mm. I'm coming. Right. So we gotta I, go next week. I for really, sure. yeah. yeah, I admire that, and I think that like people like yourself who are have that same kind of mission mm-hmm. to go out and make sure that you're tapping into your community, your friends, and artists. And that's the biggest thing. Artists are shaping the world right. so amazingly. <laughs> that needs to be spread that word needs to be spread because it's those creative minds who are coming up with the harmony utopia exactly. fest, are coming up with the solution for hair and alopecia right. coming up for somebody to be like i'm just like i don't want to be all pressed up i want to have something comfortable but fly yeah. exactly. you know what i mean and it's like it the, those platforms are very important mm-hmm. and for me especially when it comes to black women like i come from the east coast when i came to la i I did not feel black women were appreciated or valued. I agree. Or that it was, it was, uh, they were underpaid. And I would have the same conversations with different packets of friends. I yeah. have a lot of friends. Like, right. I'm a lone wolf in a sense. Like, I got my pockets, but I. I am a woman of the world. Like, I like talking to everybody, right? right. And I would hear the same conversations yeah. no matter where I was at. And I was like, okay, we need to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. That's what we're going to yeah. do. Anyone out there feel like the issues of our time are insanely important, but getting argued to the point of stupid? Or how people hushing artists online are missing the whole point of artistry? Not to mention the First Amendment. Welcome to Slap the Power. With so many batshit crazy issues coming at us each day, we need to help each other figure ways through this chaos that is living in the age of the internet. Not to mention AI. It ain't easy, and that's why we are here to help. I'm Rick Barrio Dill. And I'm Asia Nakia. With each episode of Slap the Power, we bring together artists who are using their talent and personal stories to ignite awareness, spark conversation, and mobilize support for today's most pressing issues. Through art and advocacy, we are amplifying voices that inspire change and create through their content. Whether it's important information you might have missed, special guest artists and creators who challenge the discourse through their work, or maybe you just want to follow along as Asia saves as many dogs, squirrels, and yes, even cats, as her army at Compassion Kind can save. So join us every week as we discuss real-time issues from a local and global perspective, and discuss how, as artists, 
we can make a difference by banding together in small but tremendous ways. Sonics. Love. Action. Progress. Slap Slap the the power. power. Everywhere you get your podcasts or get it delivered free to your inbox at slapthepower.com. Is that really it, though? Yeah, I've been out here for a while, like I said, and... um. (laughs) <laughs> like with the dating I'm kind of like eh. yeah even with it's, the dating yeah it's just kind of like, tell you watch that listen to that episode we gotta yeah, listen to it I was, like, I was like I don't know if you guys had an experience or what your experience like, but I had a, a stint where like black men did not talk to me really like I don't know what it was I don't know what it was black men did not talk to me now hmm. they do kind of mm-hmm. but like they're usually don't. They're usually not it's really weird me. like yeah, they're yeah, weird yeah, they want I mean, us I'm to chase the them now too, which I'm not doing I'm like I'm not yeah. chasing I'm not doing it. Sir. So it's like I was like, you better no. act like your granddaddy and stop playing. Mm-hmm. But what, exactly. what was the conclusion of that that conversation you had about that? Because I'm curious. You gotta like, watch it. I'm gonna watch it. Oh, I'm we're gonna watch it when we get home. Because sure I'm soon. interested. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, ladies. So, is there anything else that you guys want the people to know about your businesses, about the Harmony Utopia Fest? Because we about to play a game. Um, oh, I like games. Yeah. First and foremost, <laughs> follow us on social media. Yes. Royal Habits Clothing. Royal Habits Clothing. We were born royal. You already know okay. that. For the culture. <laughs> and then the Harmony Utopia Fest on IG as well. And then it's at Javier Collection. Okay. And it starts with a Z, guys. She, she got yes. on me. She got on me. <laughs> She's fancy. She said it's Ja. It's pronounced Ja. I was like, okay, girl. <laughs> All right. So we're going to play a game. I like to do a little game, you know, break it up so we're not so monotonous and serious. Okay. We're going to play this game called <clears throat> Roll With It or Bounce. And speaking, we were talking about dating. So Uh-oh. this is a dating game. You're gonna, I'm going to read you some I'm gonna read you some scenarios, and oh, you're going to let me know, are you going to roll with it or are you going to bounce? Okay? Y'all ready? Yes. Yeah. They have a dysfunctional family. I'm going to roll with it. My family's dysfunctional. No, I would say me too. Like, every, I think everybody's family's dysfunctional in some type of way. Roll yes, with it. Right. Okay, they have a child. I'm bouncing. I, I used to say it was okay, but never again. Mm-mm. I don't know. I feel like, okay, so I'm 35, mm-hmm. and I feel like, any old, I like older men. Right. So I feel like they gonna have a have child a somewhere. That's so the got, problem. Yeah. So yeah. Like, As we get older. So I'm like, I mean, generally I would say bounce, but I feel like I'm at a point where maybe I have to. Well, roll I'm with 34 right. and I'm still. I might have to roll with it, but I'm but 32, see, I'm right but now. I'm just it like, depends. Mm. It depends. like if you older, like I could do like you got like a 10, 11 year old, like mm-hmm. you know, I may be older. If you True. got a baby, yeah, it's probably bouncing. that was my problem. Yeah. They had a baby. Well, she was about maybe two or three. And I'm just like, it was just a lot. The baby mama, yeah. it was just a lot. Because well, they yeah. don't be attached. That's too. Soon. I tried it once, and it was just like, oh, that's what this is. No, that was my <laughs> first and last yeah, time. I'll tell you that right now. Minute, it was like, Mm-mm. oh, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter. It was I'm family like, time, really and I'm like, like, family time, I, family time. Family. Like, no, you're gonna go by yourself. But yeah, never again. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm good. Require too much attention. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. Like, we trying to get to know each other. Mm-hmm. Now <laughs> we a family. I'm a mom already. No. Yeah, no. Okay. They were raised um, in a single parent household. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna stick with Sano. <laughs> I, I, I guess I'll stick. Sick. There's a lot of people. I mean, yeah, it just kind of like. I was in a single parent household. I'm wrong. Yeah, with me it. too. I'm gonna stick with Sano. Okay. They use too many emojis in your messages. I'm probably gonna bounce. Yeah. I like emojis. I feel like yeah. I feel loved. I feel like you have like one at the end. Like your mine, not too many. The, yeah. The See, we East Coast girls, like, so we on that. Nah. Well, son. Because, because here's my thing. There comes a fine line between the man I want and the men that out there. I ain't gonna say nothing else about that. That part. It's <laughs> <laughs> the they want to have their lips done. Huh? Okay, so okay, oh, so is that for a male? Okay, so this is for a dating in general. So I'll like, change the question what? that they want to have any plastic surgery or any kind of thing. No, ads. no, mm-mm. no man ads. No, I'm good. <laughs> Hit the gym, bro. <laughs> the yeah, gym, you want to go to the gym? That's not happening. Okay, <laughs> they were raised from a different background. That's mm-hmm. fine. That's tricky. You all black. You know dating outside the race. Oh, you mean outside the race? I thought you mean no. Nah, I thought you meant like traditional because you know, like some people be like, oh, like I they mean, they think, want I a woman that just is race, right? Right. Well, I think yeah, it's okay. race. Think background is race. I mean, I have a type, but I mean, I have dated a Hispanic guy before, but um, I mean, I'm I'm okay with that as I long as they treat me right. You know, my race. 
Yeah. She's like, nah. She's like, nah. I'm good. Look your face. I'm sitting there thinking like, I have, but will I again? You know, you're right. That that's the only thing. Here's the thing. I have because I've had to because that's all they would talk to me. Go back to that. But it's always like I'm. T- I don't want to explain nothing really. But I, I get don't you. mind if you like. There's people that are aware enough mm-hmm. where it doesn't really bother me. But it is easier because. So I had a best friend, right? All right, that's so off topic. Never mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never right. mind. Right. They can't multitask. They can't multitask. Yes. I'm a bounce. Yeah, I'm bounce. That's going to get my nerves. Me too. I have no patience anymore. Well, that was roll with it or bounce. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to say thank y'all for coming on of the course. show and yes. talking to me. Um, I like to leave my shows with messages um, to either our younger selves or some people in the audience. Um, if you had to leave a message yourself about creating your own business and pursuing your dreams and knowing your purpose, what would you say? I would say never give up because there's been many times throughout my life I wanted to give up. I was crying in my room by myself and Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I I can't, you know. But I just say never give up because whatever you do, whether you want to be a singer, you want to be a business owner, this or that, doctor, lawyer, everything's hard. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's going Mm -hmm. to be difficult. Mm -hmm. And the people that stick with it is the ones that are going to be successful at the end of the day. So that's what I would tell myself and the viewers out there, too. So. I would tell Look, myself. I feel like you about to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just thinking. I'm like, I would probably tell myself, like, you're going to hear a thousand no's. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? It only takes one yes. And everything is about timing. That's about it. Well, there you have it. Again, ladies, let them know where they can find you. I'll drop your handles again. Yeah, that's my personal page. I am Shakora on Instagram. That's S-H-A-C-O-R-A, like Tupac. Yeah. Uh, Royal Habits Clothing on Instagram. Royal Habits Clothing. Also, the Hope, the Harmony Utopia Fest. Shout out to us. And then my Instagram is at Javier, Z as in zebra, H-A-V-E-A. And then also my hair care collection is at Javier Collection, spelled the same way as my name. So. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank y'all again for Thank coming you. on the show. Thank Thanks for having us. You're welcome. I'm glad y'all came. And if you guys have any questions or you guys want to reach out to these ladies, do not hesitate to either hit Does It That's All Up or their individual pages. It would all be listed. Like, subscribe, share. Keep it in the community. And that's it. That's That's all. all. Does It, That's All is written by me, Casey Carnage, and produced by myself and Rick Barrio Dill. Associate producer, Brie Corey, audio and video engineering and studio facilities provided by Slap Studios LA with distribution through our collective, Slap the Network. If you have any ideas for a show you want to hear or see, please email us at info at slapthepower.com. And as always, go to dazitdasall.com and sign up there to make sure you will never miss a thing. See you next show.